Welcome back. In this episode, we continue our journey through the boat building process. You've seen all the major components take shape independently, so now assembly can begin. And it all starts with hull and deck rigging. So let's take a look at what's behind the glass. The assembly process is a coordinated effort and it requires all of the major components to come together and it's the culmination of many hours of extensive engineering and design. Every component has a design in spot and purpose. Before rigging begins, the deck and hull are test fitted together, a process commonly known as dry capping. Every sportsman boat is designed to have a shoebox-like fit. This design ensures optimal strength but requires tight tolerances for a perfect fit. At this stage, we make any necessary adjustments and push the parts to the next cell. At the next station, the team takes advantage of the hull and deck being separated and assembly can begin. So let's start with the hull. Work begins with the fuel tank. Each fuel tank is pressure tested prior to being hoisted into the hull. Throughout the build process, each tank will undergo several pressure tests at different stages and is a testament to our commitment to build quality. The tank gets lowered into the stringer grid and we see how it fits perfectly in the stringer cavity. Most of our fuel tanks are made out of cross-link high-density polyethylene plastic and are built using a roto-molding technique. On our larger models, we use aluminum tanks. These custom tanks take advantage of extra space and allow for more fuel capacity. Next, let's take a look at the wiring and other electrical components. Each Sportsman model has a wiring harness designed to accommodate all of the factory components available for that model. The harness has been designed to be routed to each section of the hull. During this step, the team will also install important components such as bilge pumps, transducer, underwater lights, trim tabs, and any other build-specific components. Along the way, they will secure every wire and neatly route it through the stringer. This extra step will ensure years of failure-free use and avoid any unnecessary nuisance sounds. Another major area of assembly is plumbing. Pre-cut hoses are installed on the fuel tank for filling and venting the tank. Later in the process, these hoses will need to be connected to the fill on the deck during the capping process. As part of plumbing, the team will also install all of the necessary through hulls that will be used for bailing the cockpit and boxes. We take an extra quality assurance step during this process by grinding the backside of the fiberglass flush. This will give the through hull fitting a perfect mating surface with zero leaks. Other components, such as freshwater tanks, are also fitted with hoses that will be later attached to the deck. The hull is coming along nicely, so let's shift our attention over to the deck. It will undergo a very similar assembly process. Work begins with plumbing the self-bailing collector boxes on the deck. The other side will get attached to the through hull fittings during the capping process. At this stage, parts will get installed in precise spots that match the reinforced areas we saw during lamination. The perfect example of this are pull-up cleats. The aqua steel will give the cleats the required support and load distribution. Many different components will be installed during this step, including the boarding ladder, cockpit tow rails, and even courtesy lights. Same as the hull, every wire will be neatly routed and secured. The moment we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. It's time to cap the boat. The capping process begins with removing all the debris from the hull and deck paying close attention that all mating surfaces are clean and ready for a strong bond. The technician will apply a two to three inch bead of bonding putty, very similar to the putty we saw in the hall lamination episode. Let's take a quick second here and take a look at our bonding putty in isolation. We do wanna show you a couple of cool things about it as well as contrast it to our methylmethacrylate. So this stuff is what we're gonna use to adhere the deck to the stringer for a couple of reasons. For one, you see it's super strong, it doesn't have a ton of flex, and it's gonna to provide tons of support 
wherever it is applied. And the second thing is that it can actually be built up to different heights depending on the application. To contrast this, let's take a look at methylmethacrylate. This is the stuff that we use to bond our stringers to the halls as well as the boxes to the decks. This stuff, it almost feels like rubber and it is flexible. It is able to absorb energy. That's one of its cool properties. So just to compare, we'll use this in places where we need to have a little bit more height as well as have tons of support. And then we'll use the methylmethacrylate wherever we need a super strong bond, but we also want a little bit of energy absorption, such as through the hall onto the string. They carefully trace every mating surface and work their way towards the transom. The team must work swiftly and accurately as many different tasks will need to be performed simultaneously during the final pinning process. The deck is lowered almost all the way, leaving just enough room to complete any necessary connections of the hoses we saw earlier. Then, work begins pinning the deck and hull, starting at the bow and working towards the stern. If you recall, extra composite materials were applied in this area during the lamination to ensure screw retention at the pinning flange. For the boats with side entry doors, special clamps are used to guarantee adhesion all the way around. They will be removed once it has cured. With the capping complete, we are one step closer to the finish line and some much needed on water time. Thank you for spending some time with us taking a look at our capping and rigging. This is part of our Sportech advanced fabrication process. This proprietary combination of processes and materials yields the best results each step of the way and has been thoroughly tested for durability, longevity, and finish. All Sportsman boats feature 100% composite construction with zero wood. Join us in our next episode for another installment of Sportsman's Behind the Glass, where you'll take a look at how we build the beautiful upholstery that we have in each of our models. From Somerville, South Carolina, my name is Victor and thank you for watching.